Ben Nicholson-Smith of Sportsnet.ca in studio. We've been asking him to come in for a long time. He wants nothing to do with the show because he's an intelligent human being and knows this is very juvenile stuff. But upon consistent, consistent persistence from our end, he is in studio today. Ben, how you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on. Um, first question. What the hell with the Jays? I Go. I, I don't know. I, I've been asking this of myself and of everyone for the last few months. I mean, I, I think it's been a really slow developing offseason, and I don't think a lot of people expected it to go this slowly. Um, did Alex Anthopoulos expect it to go this slowly? Because the notion has been thrown out there in a couple of columns in this city recently that, you know, all 29 other GMs are kind of on to his thing. And, and, and Alex would go fishing for info and just kind of use it against teams. And, and essentially, the, the theory is Anthopolis is being completely kept out of the loop on everything that's going on because guys just don't trust him. Is, there, think, is there meat on that bone? There could be some meat on that bone. I do think, though, that ultimately you have 29 trade partners, 29 GMs that you can deal with. So you can't really afford to cut somebody out. Maybe here and there you're going to just prioritize your decision-making and talk to some GMs rather than every single one of them. I think Anthopolis does have people who are willing to talk to him and, and make deals with him. But at the same time, he's just not meeting those asking prices right now. So the roster as it stands, is just, it doesn't look like a contender. Ben Nicholson Smith, after begging him to come on, he agreed to come on from sportsnet.ca here on Tim and Sid. A couple of days ago on uh, Sirius XM, MLB, MLB radio had John Gibbons on as a guest. Give me a thumb. We got the Gibby. All right, let's just, let's, let's play what he said. I think we are. You know, it's kind of, I, I would guess maybe 50-50 on if, if we do something or not. I think everybody's been kind of waiting to see what happens here with Tanaka and, and, and uh, you know, things just start picking up from here on the other free agents out there. And, you know, I, I know our GM, you know, Alex has been in contact with many teams and, and, you know, of course, the agents of these free agents, you know, trying to get something done. So that's, uh, that's John Gibbons saying nothing on MLB Network Radio, which kind of goes par for the course. I Listen, I love Bob McCown. Absolutely love Bob McCown. It is so hard to listen to Alex Anthopoulos speak and to other guys in that organization speak because they don't say a damn thing. And and a lot of and and this is listen with all due respect to how they operate, the fan base is getting a little antsy here. And you need to even if it's a nugget, even if it's not real, even if it's like just to appease him for a little bit. It's like the kids screaming at the grocery store because they want everything they see. So you just get them a candy to shut them up for two seconds. There's right. no, but I, I don't even see any candy, Ben. Right. And, and I think that Anthopoulos, he's been pretty consistent in the way that he talks to us in the media and talks to fans, and then he never really reveals anything. But last winter, when he was making all those moves, there was probably a bit more leeway, a bit more patience for what he was going to do. But at this point, with Deonor Navarro being the big offseason acquisition, there are holes in this team. So can you repeat what you just said, please? Because I don't <laughs> I mean, quite believe though, right? someone in this room said it. Just, just so, you know, so people who just are driving off the road right now in anger. Repeat what you said. Deonna Navarro, the Blue Jays' big offseason acquisition. But I know it, it sounds ridiculous, Sid, but really that is their biggest, their biggest free agent signing. Um, that's depressing stuff. Ben Nicholson Smith here in studio. So, um, so Tanaka gets signed, 155 million over seven years. He has an opt out at four. This is a guy who's 24 and 0 in Japan, ERA under two, and he gets a whack of money. Uh, basically, Alex Rodriguez sends him a "You're welcome" card because his salary off the books in New York pretty much allowed this to happen. What if you're? What's the comparable with Tanaka right now in the majors, or or four years ago, or ten years ago? What is this guy? Because that's a lot of money. That's a lot of responsibility for a guy who has not struck out a single batter at the Major League Baseball level. For sure, I think that what he's not is you, Darvish. I mean, you look at Darvish; he's six five. And he's got a huge selection of pitches. He throws 95. That's not what Tanaka is. Tanaka can throw hard. He's got a lot of pitches, a great splitter, a good slider. He can get big league hitters out. But I, I think he's maybe more, if you wanted to compare him to a Japanese pitcher, he might fit more with a Kuroda, an Iwakuma, someone who might be a two or three. There's obviously the upside of him being that true ace. But at this stage, I'm not counting on him to be that number one starter. I got nothing wrong with, with, with Kuroda. I think Kuroda is an underrated arm. Um, in Major League Baseball, and if and if he's that, that's that's a fine contract. But that's it, it's still, it's just you know, you, Japan and the majors is not the same thing. I know you Darvish has been very, very, very good, but I don't think everyone's going to be you Darvish. I think the insinuation that everyone's going to be you Darvish is a little wrong. Ben, can you um, can you repeat again what the biggest off season signing is for the? I'm I'm pulling all this out of him. He's he had he didn't agree to any of this. This is my smart ass mind working. Once again, what's the biggest off season acquisition the Jays have made? Deonor Navarro. 
Could be different. No, really. God! Uh, you know, yep. the honor No, God, please, no! Yep. No! That's what they're saying. No! No! Ben Nicholson Smith, sportsnet.ca, in studio. Spring training basically is a month away. Is there an exact... I know every team reports a little differently, but we're, we're a month out, right? Less than. Less, yeah. It's got to be less than. Yeah, pitchers and catchers would report. I, I don't know if the date in front of me, February 16th or so. Um, all right, so Tanaka off the table. Posting's done. As you stated in your article earlier this week, there was not a single free agent acquisition. Not one during the posting period where Tanaka was available. So now that's done. Matt Garza apparently is on his way to Milwaukee, but what happened last night, which was a little out of the ordinary, to maybe put a snag in it? What are you hearing? Well, there were reports yesterday that the Brewers had agreed to sign him $52 million over four years. And then the Brewers actually issued a statement saying they were talking to him, but there was nothing finalized. So it sounds as though there's still a possibility it'll get worked out, but nothing complete. Maybe there's a physical issue, or at least the Brewers want to be sure what they're getting. This guy hasn't pitched a lot of innings the last few years. And the, the one thing I'll give Anthopolis, you know, full marks for is the insinuation that health would scare you off of a guy considering the absolute nightmare that's taken place with the starting rotation and parts of the lineup over the last two or three years. So if, if the Jays are going to take a pass at Garza, I understand that. I think most people can understand that. So let's, let's work under the pretense that Garza gets done in Milwaukee, available still that is remotely good, Ubaldo Jimenez, who had an ERA under four last season on a team that didn't have a ton of offense in Cleveland. You have Irvin Santana, who had an ERA under four last season. And last time I checked, pitchers on the J staff with ERAs under four, you need a, you need a, the Hubble telescope to find them. So these might not be the sexiest names out there, but I, I, think, I think guys like this can still very much help a ball club. Am I, am I alone, Ben? No, I think that you're you're definitely right on that one. I think the Blue Jays see it that way too. And to be fair to Anthopolis, they still have time. It, it might not be a lot of time before spring training, but everything is pushed back with Tanaka. They could still land one of these guys. And if they do, the rotation starts to look a lot different and a lot more capable of getting the Blue Jays through that 162-game grind and being competitive. Ben Nicholson, Smith, Sportsnet.ca in studio. All right, let's get, let's get to the issue. Because the issue now, if you're not going to pull off a trade and you don't want to give up assets if you're Alex Anthopoulos. I understand that. I think a lot of people understand that. If you want to, you know, roll up your, your pants and wade into the waters of free agency, I, I, I'm all for that. This team is crippling itself in the open market and will never compete if there is any other suitor if they keep with the philosophy of not giving out more than five years on UFAs. And... I, I, I truly believe they have to revisit this if they want to be a player. If you just want to trade all the time, then just trade. But you are, there's no point in going into any of this UFA period when you're going to be competing against real teams with a lot more money, potentially, and you're, and you're going to tell the world, you know what? I've made the playoffs since 1993. So we know what we're doing. We're not going to give up more than five years. I just Ben, it seems like they're walk they're walking into a gunfight with a with a water gun. Right. They have no shot. Yeah, and what it means essentially is that they're never going to land those elite free agents because the Robinson Canoes of the world, the Albert Pujolses, you can have your quibbles with those guys and and every time an elite free agent comes up, there are question marks. But the reality is if you want to sign one of those top free agents, you're gonna have to pay more than five years. You're gonna have to commit to that kind of But they of refuse term. to do that. Right. They refuse to do that. So okay, so um I, and I under, listen, I understand the argument. Well, it's a risky proposition. Guys can get hurt. Six, seven year guys, you don't want to get. Josh Johnson at a year and an option was a nightmare. So, what's the difference? You, you don't know where your nightmare is coming from. And if, if a guy can pitch, if he can, more importantly, if he can give you innings, which you don't have right now, Ben, I, th I think it's time for this organization to really take a long, hard look at this philosophy because it's, it's honestly, other, other agents and organizations, they're laughing at them. Like, they're becoming a laughingstock on this, and, and they're never going to get any top flight guy. I do agree. I think that you have to reconsider just because, you know, Alex Anthopoulos is someone who's all about options. Ever since he came to Toronto, he has wanted to get player contract options. John Gibbons' contract has an option. Basically, everywhere you turn, you have options. But what you're doing with the five-year limit is you're reducing your options. You're saying Completely. that 
any free agent who's going to command six or seven years is not available to the Blue Jays. And that's a strategy that if you're the Milwaukee Brewers or the Tampa Bay Rays and you're in a really small market, maybe you have to do that and show that kind of discipline. It's uncommon for a big market team to take that kind of approach. You don't see the Dodgers, the Yankees, the Cubs. This is, but this approach. isn't a big market team. But it, but it is. It should eh, be. In a lot I don't, of ways. It's not a big market team. Fourth biggest market in North America. You yeah, would think. but from a salary standpoint, from a from playoff history standpoint, this is not a – listen – I, lo- I, I was born and raised in this city. I love this city. This is not a big major league market anymore. Paul Molitor ain't walking through that door. Right. Joe Carter ain't walking through that door. But I, I think that the, the Blue Jays have said, and they've, they've shown, at least in last year, bringing up the payroll, there is that flexibility to grow. So you would think, hey, if they can spend $130 million, there's room on there for a couple bad contracts. And you're going to have them. You know, you can't, you can't just, <laughs> you can't live in, you can't walk outside your home every day thinking something's going to hit you from the sky. Like, okay, everything's a risk. Something's going to work out. You know, something might not. But you need to give yourself a shot if you are serious about UFAs. And it just seems to me this team is not serious about UFAs. I've been serious about UFAs for a long time. And if you don't pull the, tra- if you don't like what's in the trade market, too bad. You've handcuffed yourself if you're not giving out longer than five-year deal. I just, it just seems like they're spinning their wheels on this. Like last year was different because they had the moves and they made those deals. The cupboards bear on prospects. Those options aren't available anymore. And you need B, C to step up and bring in other players. And if you're only giving out five-year contracts, that ain't going to happen. Quickly, aside from Irvin Santana and Jimenez, those those are the names you hear a lot. What's the second tier of guys they might be in the running for that might accept three-year deals or four-year deals or something the Jays are comfortable with? What are are the guys that are still sitting there? You've got guys like Bronson Arroyo. uh, You've got a Jason Hamill type, uh, potentially Paul Mahalam. So these are guys who would slot in at the back of a rotation. They're They're not not going to be that. They're not terrible arms. Those are not terrible arms. At the same time, Bronson Arroyo, with his history of allowing home runs, that's a question for me. And his history of horrific hair. Right. We can't can't have that in this city. We just can't. We can't. 